Section one of a third Rubiat Miscellany. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For further information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Algie Pug. Section one. Thirty nine quatrains from J. B. Nicola. Translated by Charles Eliot Norton. In this world, which for an instant serves us as an asylum, we have experienced naught but trouble and misfortune. Alas, no problem of creation has been solved for us, and yet we quit this earth with hearts full of regret. Since no one can assure us of tomorrow, hasten to rejoice thy sad heart. Drink, O oh beloved, drink from the ruby cup, for the moon shall long turn around the earth without again finding us. When I take in my hand a cup of wine, and in the joy of my heart am drunken, then in the fire that consumes me, behold, a hundred miracles become real, and words clear as limpid water seem to explain the mystery of the universe. Unbelief is divided from faith but by a breath, doubt from certainty but by a breath, life from death but by a breath. Pass gaily over the dividing line. My life runneth out in a brief space. It passeth as the wind of the desert. Therefore, while a breath remaineth to me, there are two days concerning which I will not disquiet myself. The day that hath not come, and the day that hath gone. Who can believe that he who fashioned the cup meaneth to break it to pieces? All these fair heads, these beautiful arms, these delicate hands, by what love are they made? By what hate are they destroyed? O Kayam, why grievest thou because of thy sin? What solace findest thou in thus tormenting thyself? He who hath not sinned shall not taste the sweet of forgiveness. It is for sin that forgiveness exists. How, then, canst thou fear? That day, when the heavens shall melt, and the stars be darkened, I will stop thee on thy way, and, seizing thee by the hem of thy garment, will require of thee to tell me, why, having given me life, thou hast taken it from me. I asked of the world, the bride of man, what was her dowry, and she answered me, my dowry is the joy of thy heart. The heart on whom the light of love hath shone, whose name is written in the book of love, that heart, whether it frequenteth mosque or synagogue, is free from fear of hell or hope of heaven. If I drink wine, it is not for mere delight of the taste, nor that I should become disorderly and renounce religion and morality. No, it is that I may, for one moment, exist outside of myself. I know not whether he who hath created me belongeth to paradise or to hell. But this I know, that a cup of wine, my beautiful love, and a lute on the edge of a meadow, are three things which I enjoy today, while thou livest on the promise of a paradise to come. At this moment, when life is not yet gone out of my heart, it seemeth to me there are few problems that I have not solved. But when I appeal to my understanding and turn inward on myself, I perceive that my life hath flowed away, and as yet I have defined nothing. O thou, in whose eyes sin is of no account, order the wise to proclaim this truth, for there is no folly equal to that of making the divine foreknowledge the accomplice of iniquity. My being was given me without my consent, so that my own existence is a wonder to me. Yet I leave the world with regret, having comprehended neither the object of my coming, of my stay, nor of my departure. They who by their learning are the cream of the world, who by their understanding traverse the heights of heaven, even they, in their search after knowledge of the divine, have their heads turned, whirling in vertigo, 
like the firmament itself. Give thyself to joy, for grief will be infinite. The stars shall meet again at the same point of the firmament, but out of thy body shall bricks be made for a palace wall. The day when I shall be a stranger to myself, when my name shall be as a tale that is told, then make of my clay a wine jar for use in the tavern. The secrets of existence no man hath penetrated, a step beyond himself no man hath taken. From the scholar to the master I behold only incompetence, the incompetence of all of woman born. Who hath found access behind the curtain of destiny? Who hath knowledge of the secrets of providence? Night and day, for threescore years have I meditated, yet have I learned nothing. The riddle remaineth unsolved. Drink wine, for wine putteth an end to the disquietudes of the heart, and delivereth from meditations on the two and seventy sects. Abstain not from this alchemy, for if thou drinkest but one jarful, a thousand infirmities shall fall away from thee. The devotee comprehendeth not, as we the divine mercy. A stranger knoweth thee not so well as a friend. If thou sayest, Behold, if thou committest sin, I will cast thee into hell. Go, say it unto one who knoweth thee not. The rolling heavens do naught but multiply our woes. What they set upon earth, they quickly snatch away. Ah, if they who have not yet come knew what suffering the world inflicts, they would take good heed how they came. O friend, why busy thyself concerning existence? Why trouble thy heart and soul with idle thoughts? Live happy, pass joyful days, for in truth thy advice was not asked concerning creation. O thou, in quest of whom the whole world hath gone astray and is in distress, neither prayers nor riches avail to find thee out. Thou takest part in every conversation, but all are deaf. Thou art before the eyes of all, but all are blind. Though I have not pierced the pearl of obedience that is due to thee, though never with my heart have I swept up the dust of thy steps, yet I despair not of reaching the sill of thy throne of mercy, for never have I importuned thee with my complaints. We are puppets with which the heavens amuse themselves. We are pieces on the chessboard of being, whence we are laid aside, one by one, into the coffin of nothingness. I saw on the walls of the city of Tus a bird with a skull of Kai Kivus before him. The bird said to the skull, Where now is the noise of thy glory? Where now is the sound of thy clarion? If the rose be not ours, yet have we not its thorns? If the light reach us not, have we not the fire? If heaven refuse me peace, am I not ready for war? All things that the world contains are images and illusions, and he hath little wisdom who includeth not himself among these images. Be quiet, then, O friend. Drink, and deliver thyself from vain fancies and thoughts that cannot reach their goal. If I am drunken with old wine, so be it. If I am infidel or idolater, so be it. Let each man think of me as he will. What matters it? I belong to myself, and I am that which I am. The circle of the universe is a ring of which you and I are the graven gem. Lift thou from my heart the weight of the vicissitudes of life. Hide from men's eyes my faults. Give me happiness today, and tomorrow deal with me according to thy mercy. I beheld a man withdrawn into a desert place. He was neither heretic nor Mussulman. He possessed neither riches nor religion, nor God, nor truth, nor law, nor certitude. Who is there in this world, or in the other, who hath such courage? 
the wheel of heaven runs to thy death and mine o beloved it conspires against thy soul and mine come come sit beside me on the grass for little time remaineth before the grass shall spring from my dust and thine tell me what man is there who hath not fallen into sin can man exist and not sin if because i do ill thou punishest me with ill say what difference is there between thee and me thou hast set a hundred snares round about us thou sayest if ye fall into them ye shall surely die it is thou that spreadest the net and if a man be taken in it thou condemnest him thou deliverest him to death thou callest him rebel a sheikh said to a harlot thou art drunken thou art taken in the net of whoso will and she answered o sheikh i am that which thou sayest but thou art thou what thou professest to be at times thou art hidden disclosing thyself unto no one then again thou revealest thyself in all the images of the universe verily it is for thyself and for thine own pleasure that thou workest these marvels for lo thou art both the show and the spectator end of section one section two of a third rubiat miscellany this librivox recording is in the public domain fifty quatrains of omar Gayam, translated by michael kearney from works of edward fitzgerald eighteen eighty seven out from our inn one morn a voice came roaring up sots scamps and madmen quit your heavy snoring up Come, pour we out a measure full of wine and drink, ere yet the measures brimmed for us their pouring up. Lo, the dawn breaks, and the curtain of night is torn. Up, swallow thy morning cup. Why seem to mourn? Drink wine, my heart, for the dawns will come and come, still facing to us when our faces to earthward turn. Life fleets. Why care we then, be it sweet or bitter, At Balk or at Naishapur, that the soul shall flitter? Drink wine, for when we are gone, The moon shall ever continue to wax and wane, To pale and slitter. See how the zephyr tears the scarf of the rose away, The rose's beauty charms the bulbul's woes away. Go, sit in the shade of the rose, for every rose that springs from the earth, again to earth soon goes away. So long as a frame of flesh and of bone shall be, stir not one step outside fate's hostelry. Bow to no foe thy neck, were it Rustum's self, take from no friend a gift, though hut him he. In the springtime, biding with one who is hoary fair, and a flask of wine, if tis to be had, somewhere on the tillage's grassy skirt. Alack, though most may think it a sin, I feel that my heaven is there. A flask of red wine and a volume of song together, half a loaf, just enough the ravage of want to tether. Such is my wish. Then, thou in the waste with me, Oh, sweeter were this than a monarch's crown and feather. He who doth here below but half a loaf possess, Who for his own can claim some sheltering nook's recess, He who to none is either lord or thrall, Go, tell him he enjoys the world's full happiness. I know not if he who needed my clay to man Belong to the host of heaven or the hellish clan, a life mid the meadows, with woman and music and wine, Heaven's cash is to me, let heaven's credit thy fancy trepan. Darling, ere sorrow thy nightly couch enfold again, Bid wine be brought, red sparkling, as of old, again. And thou, weak fool, 
think not that thou art gold when buried none will dig thee up from the mould again this old inn called the world that man shelters his head in pied curtains of dawn and of dusk o'er its spreading tis the banqueting hall many jamshids have quitted the couch many bahrams have found their last bed in here where bahram oft-brimmed his glorious chalice deers breed and lions sleep in the ruined palace like the wild ass he lassoed the great hunter lies in the snare of death's wild huntsman callous the verdure that yon rivulet's bank arraying is the down on an angel's lip in homely saying is oh tread not thereon disdainfully it springeth from the dust of some tulip cheek that there decaying is let not the morrow make thee friend downhearted draw profit of the day yet undeparted we'll join when we to-morrow leave this mansion the band seven thousand years ago that started the wheel of heaven thy death and mine is bringing friend over our lives a deadly spell tis flinging friend come sit upon this turf for little time is left ere fresher turf shall from our dust be springing friend myriad minds are busy sects and creeds to learn the doubtful from the sure or puzzled to discern suddenly from the dark the crier raised a cry not this nor that ye fools the path that ye must turn the learned the cream of mankind who have driven intellect's chariot over the heights of heaven void and o'erturned like that blue sky they trace are dazed when they to measure thee have striven forth like a hawk from mystery's world i fly seeking escape to win from the low to the high arriving where none i find who the secret knows out through the door i go that i entered by this life is but three days space and it speeds apace like wind that sweeps away o'er the desert's face so long as it lasts two days ne'er trouble my mind the day undawned and the day that has run its race sprung from the four and the seven i see that never the four and the seven respond to thy brain's endeavour drink wine for i tell thee four times o'er and more returned there is none once gone thou art gone for ever thy body's a tent where the soul like a king in quest of the goal of naught is a momentary guest he arises death's farash uproots the tent and the king moves on to another stage to rest up smooth-faced boy the daybreak shines for thee brimmed with red wine let the crystal goblet be for this hour is lent thee in the house of dust another thou mayst seek but ne'er shalt see a double-sized beaker to measure my wine i'll take two doses to fill my settled design i'll take with the first i'll divorce me from faith and from reason quite with the next a new bride in the child of the vine i'll take those who are paragons of worth and ken whose greatness torch-like lights their fellow men out of this night profound no path have traced for us they've babbled dreams then fallen to sleep again this vault of heaven at which we gaze astounded may by a painted lantern be expounded the light's the sun, the lantern is the world, and we, the figures whirling, dazed around it. But puppets are we in fate's puppet show. No figure of speech is this, but in truth tis so. On the draft-board of life we are shuffled to and fro, then, one by one, to the box of nothing go. Since life has love, no true reality why let its coil of cares a trouble be yield thee to fate whatever of pain it bring 
the pen will never unwrite its writ for thee. In the tavern, better with thee my soul I share than in the mosque without thee uttering prayer. O thou, the first and last of all that is, or doom thou me to burn, or choose to spare. When the Supreme, my body, made of clay, he well foreknew the part that I should play. Not without his ordainment have I sinned. Why would he then I burn a judgment day? The wayward caprices, my life, that have tinted all spring from the mould on my being imprinted, naught else, and naught better, my nature could be. I am as I came from the crucible minted. Woe, that life's work should be so vain and hollow, sin in each breath, and in the food we swallow. Black is my face, that what was bid, undone is. If done the unbidden, ah, what then must follow? To a potter's shop, yestreen, I did repair. Two thousand dumb or chattering pots were there, all turned to me, and asked, with speech distinct, who is that makes, that buys, that sells our ware? When fate, at her foot, a broken wreck shall fling me, and when fate's hand, a poor plucked fowl, shall wring me, beware of my clay, aught else than a bowl to make, that the scent of the wine new life in time may bring me. Let wine, gay comrades, be the food I'm fed upon, these amber cheeks, its ruby light, be shed upon. Wash me in't when I die, and let the trees of my vineyard yield the beer that I lie dead upon. Since the moon and the star of eve first shone on high, nought has been known with ruby wine could vie. Strange that the vintners should in traffic deal, better than what they sell, what could they buy? Ah, that young life should close its volume bright away, mirth's springtime green, that it should pass from sight away. Ah, for the bird of joy, whose name is youth, we know not when she came, nor when took flight away. If I, like God or heaven's high fate, could reign, I'd sweep away the present heaven's domain, and from its ruins such a new one build that an honest heart its wish could I attain. I would, God, were this whole world's scheme renewing, and now, at once, that I might see it doing, that either from his roll my name were cancelled, or luckier days for me from heaven accruing. Since none can be our surety for tomorrow, sweeten, my love, thy heart to-day from sorrow. Drink wine, fair moon, in wine-light, for the moon will come again and miss us many a morrow. The moon cleaves the skirt of the night. Then, oh, drink wine, for never again will moment like this be thine. Be gay, and remember that many and many a moon on the surface of earth again and again will shine. Appoint ye a tryst, happy comrades, anon, and when, as your revel in gladness comes on, the saki takes goblet in hand, oh, remember, and bless, while you drink, the poor fellow that's gone. Thou, chosen one from earth's full muster roll to me, dearer than my two eyes, than even my soul to me, though nothing than life more precious we esteem, Yet dearer art thou, my love, a hundredfold to me. Nothing but pain and wretchedness we earn in this world that for a moment we sojourn in. We go, no problem solved, alas, discerning, myriad regrets within our bosoms burning. O Master, grant us only this, we prithee, preach not, but dumbly guide to bliss, we prithee. We walk not straight? Nay, it is thou who squintest. Go, heal thy sight, and leave us in peace, we prithee. Hither, come hither, love, my heart doth need thee. 
Come and expound a riddle I will read thee. The earthen jar bring to, and let us drink, love, ere turn to clay, to earthenware they need thee. Wash me, when dead, in the juice of the vine, dear friends. Let your funeral service be drinking and wine, dear friends. And if you would meet me again, when the doomsday comes, search the dust of the tavern, and sift from it mine, dear friends. How e'er with beauty's hue and bloom endowed I be, of tulip cheek and cypress form, though proud I be, yet know I not why the limner chose that here, in this mint house of clay, amid the painted crowd I be. Unworthy of hell, unfit for heaven I be. God knows what clay he used when he moulded me. Foul as a punk, ungodly as a monk. No faith, no world, no hope of heaven I see. Wicked men call me ever, yet blameless I. Think how it is, ye saints. My life, ye cry, breaks all heaven's laws. Good lack, I have no sin that needs reproach, save wenching and drink. Then why? Oh, thou hast shattered to bits my jar of wine, my lord. Thou hast shut me out from the gladness that was mine, my lord. Thou hast spilt and scattered my wine upon the clay. O oh, dust in my mouth, if drunkenness be not thine, my lord. End of section 2「Section 3 of a Third Rubiat Miscellany – This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Nine Quatrains of Umar Khayyam, translated by Peter Wally There's not a heart but bleeds for thy disdain, There's not a sage but has gone mad for thee, And though for love thou givest no love again, There's not a brain that from thy love is free. Drink, drink, like quicksilver I see with ruth life from thee slide, and false is fortune, hope a dream, and youth ebbs like a tide. Come, and ere sorrows swarm up to harry us, idle mine, blithely the wine cup will drain. We are not gold that the rough hands that bury us ever should care to exhume us again. We are but puppets danced by juggling fate, To trim the phrase no jot of truth I bait. On being's board we serve to dress a play, And, played our little game, we're packed away. Though steeped in sin, let no vain qualms be thine, Nor fear to meet thy Maker. Death atones, die drunk and reprobate, his sun will shine as bland as ever on thy rotting bones. Earth, water, such is the sum of us. Monk, priest, thou hast made us the same. Fame, shame, all that may come of us, thine is the honour, and thine is the blame. I am drunk with old wine, so I am. A rank libertine. So I am. Let them think of me what they will. I am mine. As I am, so I am. Lighten my cares and my sorrow. Hide from my fellows my guilt. Keep me happy today, and tomorrow deal with me as thou wilt. Some trust their church or creed to bear them out. Some pray for faith and tremble at a doubt. Methinks I hear a still small voice declare, The way to God is neither here nor there. End of section 3 Section 4 of A Third Rubiat Miscellany This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 55 Quatrains of Omar Khayyam Translated by H. G. Keane, 1895, from 
Loose Stanzas My span is but a few days, scarcely one, Of fortune wind on the desert blowing, quickly gone. Long as life lasts, I care not but for two, The day that is not, and the day that is done. This vase once loved, like me, a lovely girl, And bent in rapture o'er a scented curl, This handle that you see upon its neck, once wound itself about a neck of pearl. Be watchful. Fortune menaces deceit. Sharp is the sword above thee. Keep thy feet. And if she offer thee a sugared nut, forbear to taste. There is poison in the sweet. A hundred thousand saints the past has seen. Sinai, a hundred thousand prophets seen. The Palatine for many an emperor. Khazra, a hundred thousand shahs has seen. That vault of azure and that golden bowl have rolled for ages, will for ages roll. Even so, the destined sons of destiny, we come and go, poor fragments of the whole. When we are gone, the world will still remain, yet neither name nor sign of us retain. In days past we were not, and no one cared, nor will in future, when we are not, again. Ah, woe! Our hands must drop their garnered store, And Azrael's talons bathe our hearts in gore, While from that bourne no traveller returns To tell us how they fare who went before. Those sons of care whom mortals call the great Have lives of trouble, all at odds with fate. Yet him who is not passion's slave, like them, they hardly reckon as of man's estate. The old familiar faces, all are fled, under the feet of Azrael, trampled, dead. At life's sad feast they shared the wine a while, but drank too quickly, and were quickly sped. The wheeling zenith hides an unborn thought, a cup with universal meaning fraught. Lament not when the cup comes round to you, but drain with gladness what your turn has brought. This wheel, that will to none its course explain, Mahmud, Ayaz, a thousand such, has slain. Drink wine, for life is given to no one twice, and none that once has lived comes back again. In circles of existence too long pent, and fallen from man's estate, by sad descent, since life can never bring us what we want, would God's satiety could feel content. Pure from the void we came, impure we go, welcomed with joy we came, in grief we go, tempered with tears in furnace of the heart, life given to the winds, to dust we go. Help all you may their heavy loads to bear, Lay waste the shrines of sacrifice and prayer. This soothsay of Khayyam receive, O friend. Drink wine, take purses, but be kind to care. This pile, whose gables wooed the smile of day, And on whose floor kings wont their brows to lay, We saw a dove upon its battlements, And all she said was, Where, ah, where are they? Since all man gathers in this waste below, Feeds him on ashes, and then bids him go, Happiest is he who soonest takes his leave, Or he who never saw this world of woe. Temple and Kaaba, both are fanes of prayer, Bells and muazzins call alike to prayer, Churches and mosques, crosses and rosaries, What are they all but instruments of prayer? In fane or cloister, mosque or school, One lies a dread of hell, one dreams of paradise, But none that know the secrets of the Lord Will sow their hearts with such absurdities. If in your heart the lamp of love you plant, Whether in mosque or synagogue you haunt, If in love's court your name be registered, Hell you will fear not, heaven you will not want. Pity! The roar should win the well-cooked cake, 
and prentice bunglers mar the plans we make sweet eyes that bid the hearts of men to beat shine but for schoolboys or for eunuchs sake if roses fail my fate is thorns you see and if light fails why darkness does for me and if i find no place for muslim prayer i must make shift with christian heresy ah heedless race the world's affairs are naught foundation of the wind whereof comes naught the bounds of being are two negatives one on each side and midway you too naught seek not to do the people harm by night lest they appeal to god from thee by night lean not on strength or beauty of thine own for this and that will leave thee soon by night the red wine in a festal cup is sweet with sound of lute and dulcimer is sweet a holy man who does not think it so he too a thousand miles from us is sweet on love's sweet path pursue the offering heart in love's own precinct seek a perfect heart a hundred temples are but beaten clay let be the temple so thou find a heart arise where is the song you used to sing your little mouth my spirit's food can bring but pour me wine as rosy as your face my heart is like your ringlet's broken wing these compasses resemble you and me whose heads are two though one the body be about the centre like a circle twined but in one point they meet at last you see a jug of wine a book of poetry for stay of life a crust of bread give me and thou beside me in the wilderness the sultan's kingdom better cannot be i cannot see the form mine eyes require nor can i bear the frustrated desire nor yet relate my pain to any one hard suffering strange grief delightful fire your love nets hold my hair forsaken head for which my lips with wine are always red repentance born of reason you have wrecked and bid time tear the robe that patience made now that new joy to earth the zephyrs bring and every living heart goes forth to spring on every bough the hand of moses gleams the voice of jesus quickens everything it is the season when the land grows green and moses hand upon the boughs is seen the breath of jesus rises from the ground and weeping clouds above the landscape lean i am joseph's flower from egypt said the rose my ruby mouth such glittering jewels shows i asked her to produce another sign see she replied with blood my raiment flows look where i may i see on every side fresh fountains springing in the champagne wide and lawns that once were called the plains of hell now smile like heaven with ladies heavenly eyed if i go right thy guiding hand is where if i go darkling thy clear light is where dost thou give heaven for my obedience tis due but thy benevolence is where the impress of his hand the vessels keep who makes and throws them on the rubbish heap but if they turn out well why are they broken if ill the blame is surely his to reap he makes earth bear the firmamental thrust he scars our hearts with sorrow fear and lust and many a ruby lip and perfumed lock garners in clay and coffers in the dust when shame for sin committed stirs the heart hot from the breast the scalding eye-drops start and surely when the slave laments his fault complete forgiveness is the master's part i drink and every wise man does like me which god no doubt regards indulgently foreseen before the making of the world if i did not where would his prescience be to keep from what is ordered beats our skill 
bid and forbid, are masters of our will. Helpless we stand between their yea and nay, like guests advised to tilt, but not to spill. Thou settest in my pathway, snare and gin, saying, I slay thee if thou fall therein. The world is free from thy command, no jot, thine the command, but mine is still the sin. As we know thee, the zealot knows thee not, like faithful followers, strangers know thee not. Thou sayest, the wicked shall be sent to hell, say so to some of those that know thee not. Better in wine-shops for thy secrets yearn, than patter praises that by rote we learn. Ah, thou art Alpha and Omega still, whether thou please to cherish or to burn. His mercy gained, what cause have we for fear? His scrip being full, what journey need we fear? If by his grace my face be once made white, in no degree the black book will I fear. I war in vain with nature. What is the cure? I suffer for my doings. What is the cure? I know his mercy covers all my sin, for shame that he has seen it. What is the cure? I weep, because I am of evil fame, defiled with many a lust and taint of shame, commanded things undone, forbidden done, I weep to find my life so full of blame. I grovel to appease the heavenly will, I found no claim by good to atone for ill. Where so thy bounty pleases, there will come undone as done, and done as undone still. Ah, ne'er do well, that workest naught but ill, yet grovelest to appease the heavenly will, hope not for absolution, Evermore good will be good, and evil, evil still. At dawn a voice came from the house of wine. Ho, reckless wastrels, lying there supine, rise, let us fill our measures full of drink, before they fill your measures, yours and mine. I'll drink till such a scent of wine shall rise out of the earth where my dead carcass lies, that cupsick revellers, passing by the place, shall from that scent receive new enterprise. Ah, comrades, strengthen me with draughts of wine, until my sallow cheeks like rubies shine, and wash me in it after I am dead, and stitch my shroud with tendrils of the vine. If I drink wine, it is not for delight, nor unto holiness to do despite. I drink to breathe a moment free from self. No other cause would make me drink all night. Unless girls pour the wine, the wine is naught. Without the music of the flute is naught. Look as I may into the world's affairs. Mirth is the only good. The rest is naught. Clouds come and soon will feed the grass with rain. Let life's glad moments make our senses feign. Rest thee, dear friend, a while, and drink with me, till, of our clay, fresh grass shall grow again. This is the time for roses and repose, beside the stream that through the meadow flows. A friend or two, a rose-like lady love, with wine, and not to hear the clergy prose. End of section 4「Section 5 of a Third Rubiat Miscellany. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Twenty Quatrains Rendered into English Verse by George Milner. 1. Orthodoxy. If I, in pearls of song, paid not thy due, at least I never from my face withdrew the dust of sin. So, mercy, Lord, I crave. For why? I never said that one was two. 2. Abnegation Better in taverns tell my thought to thee than in the mosque, unthinking, bend my knee. Dread power! Just as thou wilt, burn me, 
or at thy side in heaven let me be. 3. Humility. So far as in thee lies, do not deride the helpless drunkard. Lay pretence aside, if henceforth in thy life thou seekest rest, with humble folk content thee to abide. 4. Tenderness. As in thee lieth, grieve not any one, let thine own anger burn for thee alone. Wouldst thou hereafter find eternal peace, fret if thou wilt thyself, but harass none. 5. Live for today. Tomorrow, then for thee no moon may shine, make happy now this passionate heart of thine. Next moon may seek us long, but find us not. Drink with thy moon, drink now the fragrant wine. 6. The Koran and the Wine Cup Men read the Koran slackly, now and then. Say, this is best, we'll read once more, but when? Ah, on the wine cup's rim a text is writ, which they will read again and yet again. 7. Oblivion Wine and our drunken bodies both are clear, but on the drinking bench no hope or fear. Souls, hearts, and garments reek with lees of wine, and earth, air, water are no longer here. 8. Friendship Make but few friends in life, for that is best. If some be near, keep far away the rest. When wisdom's eye is opened, thou mayst find, he is thy foe, who lent upon thy breast. 9. The Jug This jug was once a lover such as I, and with a fair one lip to lip did lie, this curling handle on its neck, an arm that round another's neck lay tenderly. 66. A Rejoinder I saw a man who trampled on the clay, contemptuous, but I heard the trampled say, in mystic language, be thou very still, thou mayst like me be trampled on to-day. 72. Eternal Secrets The eternal secrets are a tangled skein, who would unravel them makes labour vain. Tyro and teacher, simpleton and sage, alike in abject impotence remain. 80. Spring The breeze of spring is in the world again, and hope revives with soft descending rain. The budding boughs are white as Moses' hand, and Jesus' perfumed breath floats o'er the plain. 82. The Rosebud Each morn bedecks the tulip's face with dew, and tender violets are bent downward too. But, best of all, the rosebud is to me, whose closely gathered skirts show nothing through. 83. The Empty Glass Friends, when ye meet the waning day to crown with mirth and wine, remember I am gone, and as, poor helpless one, my turn comes round for drinking, turn a goblet upside down. 86. Follow me. If thou desirest him, this shalt thou find, wife, child, and friend, must all be left behind, alone into the wilderness depart, and every burden from thy back unbind. 89. The Potter Within the crowded market yesterday, I saw a potter pounding lumps of clay, that said, in mystic tongue, We were as thou, and thou shalt be as we. Deal gently, pray. 94. The Chess Board now I speak plain, not parables alone. Heaven plays, we are the pieces, naught is known. We're moved across the board of life, then fall into the box of nothing, one by one. 98. The Two Logs Come, fill the cup, for day breaks white as snow. Learn colour from the wine in ruby glow. Bring me two logs of aloe and make one into a lute the other burn below. 101. Counsel I give thee counsel, listen unto me, for sake of heaven, wear not hypocrisy. 
hereafter ends not time is but a day for that one day sell not eternity 103 pots and potter into a potter's shop i went last night and saw two thousand pots to left and right some spoke aloud some sadly held their peace but one aggressive cried with all his might who makes the pots that's what i want to know who buys us standing in ignoble row who has the right to sell us tell me that and when we're sold where is it that we go end of section five Section six of a third Rubiat Miscellany. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Twenty five quatrains translated by Tinsley Pratt from Persephone and Hades and Other Poems. Behold, I kneel, though sinful to the core, my life is now with sorrow darkened o'er, nor am I hopeless of thy mercy save that little service have i shown before creation's first and last of thee i pray that thou wilt set me in the clearer way till now i followed but the lure of sin a prodigal although my years are grey lend me thine ear while open stands the door i bow me down with sorrow stricken sore the master of the tavern stands agape to find me kneeling thus upon the floor do with me as thou wilt or cherish me or let me suffer in the flame for thee tis well the tavern haunter hears my grief that he the snare of sin may quickly flee Kayam, what talk is this of grief and sin how shouldst thou hope the meed of grace to win by fruitless whining at the door of fate thinkest thou there are no others of thy kin he knew who breathed into this life of mine i should not scorn the treasures of the vine then let the churlish one say what he will since i was born to sing of love and wine in cell and college some may seek for grace and yearn to look upon the prophet's face brothers if ye but read the koran well the touch shall come within a little space upon the goblet is a text enwrought which men read ever but they have not sought the veiled truth and lacking this i say their dreams and hopes alike shall come to naught hear thou the word from khayyam though men say thou mayst not rob upon the world's highway the truth runs couldst thou read it but aright let not man's blame the hand of justice stay forbear thy wrath so far as in thee lies give pain to none but look with gentle eyes upon thy brother's fault so shalt thou dwell with those the world doth hold exceeding wise few friends are best why wilt thou ope thy mind to every chance acquaintance of thy kind he whom thou boldest dear perchance shall prove at utmost need unstable as the wind scorn not the mean artificer of earth nor coldly glance on those of humble birth for know thou proud one that some hovel poor ere this hath reared the life of sovereign worth ah woe to him that feels not passion's sway his life no morrow hath nor yesterday dull clod of earth without heart cheering love far better thou wert buried neath the clay come fill the cup the day breaks like snow i feel the blood within me pulse and glow cast yonder log of aloe on the fire and with the loot will banish care and woe thou hypocrite why all this outward show if inward grave be thine shall he not know lay thou aside this garment of thy sin not for an hour eternity forego regard my virtues one by one i pray my faults at every ten do thou but stay the burden of my guilt lies in his hand and all the errors of my earthly way take heed 
the sword of destiny is keen if fortune place thy wanton lips between the almond sweets of life receive them not for subtle poison lurketh there unseen what though my words have oft been laughed to scorn impotent are the lives of woman born yet hear me still how great soe'er thou be thou canst not stay the coming on of dawn the girdle of my woes hath many years i water oxus with my frequent tears yet hell to me is but an hour of care and paradise a life devoid of fears to-day is sweet why talk of yesterday thou canst not bid the breeze of spring to stay and this same rose that blooms to-night may fall or ere the morrow's dawn awakens grey to-morrow is not thine nor hast thou power to stay thy going for a single hour rejoice thy heart and but remember this if not the seed time thou hast known the flower as o'er the sandy desert wastes the wind sweeps on and leaves no trace for man behind so sweeps the torrent of my grief through me nor holdeth habitation in my mind yon vault of blue that canopies my head shall nourish still the earth when i am dead why should i grieve or shall it be my gain to sorrow ere my lusty days are fled within yon azure dome i read no grief why should i render pleasure then more brief my life is but a day within his eye and passeth with the falling of the leaf unconquerable fate can nothing turn thy purpose from the life i cannot spurn then sweet-faced bearer of the golden cup give me to drink ere i to dust return end of section six section seven of a third rubiat miscellany this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Thirty-two quatrains quoted by Herbert George Plimmer in A Mariana. Lord, thou hast broken my pitcher of wine, thou hast shut for me the gate of pleasure, thou hast thrown my pure wine in the dust. Plague on it, thou too art drunk, Lord. Who is there in the world who has not committed a sin? Say, when has one lived who has not committed a sin? Say, if I do evil, thou returnest evil for evil. What is then the difference betwixt me and thee? Say, am I a wine-bibber? What if I am? Do I appear to you a lunatic or an infidel? Suppose I am. Every sect misnames me, but I heed them not. I am my own, and what I am... I am. Some fight for dogmas and rules, others for beliefs or negations. Who is he then to whom truth shows herself? The answer comes, she shows herself to none. Who never go a step out of the way, who spend long nights in prayer, and who make many brave ones lose both body and soul. O oh, canting saints, Grant me one request, spare me your preaching, and be quiet. Believe me, I walk aright, but you see all awry. So leave me alone, and go, by yourself spectacles. Pagodas and mosques signify slavery. The Christian bells, listen, they ring slavery. The holy stone, the holy ribbon, rosary and cross, believe me, they all spell only slavery. In churches, in mosques and synagogues, we are deceived in order to make us at peace, but those who pursue the secrets of nature are not deceived by any fear of the beyond. I do not drink from mere pleasure of drinking, nor for the sake of breaking the Koran's laws. No, but to attain unconsciousness of the sense of self, that is the reason the wise drink deeply. In one hand a wine cup, in the other the Koran, half inclining to wrong, half to right. 
the turquoise vault looks down on a sorry moslem and yet on not quite a heathen if thou hast pity on my misery take from my shoulders the burden of sin pardon the feet that will go towards the tavern pardon the hands that will seize the glass i resolved at last to be sober and pious and in my heart was complete peace but alas my goodness was shattered at the first glass my sobriety drowned in the first draught of wine the koran says that in paradise huris dwell and fountains run with wine surely if these be lawful there it is right to love them both here as well go to the prophet and ask him with khayyam's respects why he has allowed us sour milk and has forbidden us sweet wine tell khayyam that only a fool could ask so foolish a question to the wise my command does not apply only to fools is wine forbidden when i was in golden youth i thought i had found out the riddle of existence but now at the end of life i see well that i did not understand one word of it all what launched that golden orb to run its course what will one day wreck its proud structure that has no wise one ever yet been able to find out and thereto no weighing nor measuring is of use no man can explain the riddle of nature no man can go a hair's breadth outside his own being and the greatest master is ever only a student the riddle of this world neither thou nor i can solve neither thou nor i can read the cipher writing of the universe we would both know what the veil hides but when the veil falls there will be neither thou nor i from this world which for a short time gave me lodging i now depart to all my questions no answer did i get and i take a thousand doubts with me to the grave couldst thou living know the secret of the world thou wouldst not in death lose that treasure but if thou knowest naught here whilst thou art thyself how canst thou know aught when stripped of self the secrets of the world thou wilt never fathom the word that none has found thou wilt not find make thee an earthly paradise in wine whether there is a paradise there or not thou'lt find out some day beings are kindled like bright sparks they live love hate and drink they empty here a glass or two and are then extinguished drowned in the dust of eternity what has it availed thee that i am here what will it help thee if thou takest me away alas no man's ear hath ever heard for what purpose we come here or why we go from hence yesterday in my drunkenness i broke my jar of wine against a stone the fragments of the jar said as thou art i was and as i am thou wilt be the drop wept at its severance from the sea the world sea laughed saying silly is thy grief are we not all one we are separated only by a tiny point of time at first i was not conscious of myself at last thou wilt break the chain of consciousness if this from the first were thy intention why didst thou ever allow me to become aware of myself in this endless circle in which we live one cannot see beginning or end no one can tell whence we came and no one knows whither we go when thou createdst life thou createdst also death us thy work thou consecratest to destruction if thy work were bad say whose is the fault and if good why throw us on the dust heap though khayyam has no jewels of virtue and shines not in complete sinner's purity yet he does not despair of thy grace because he has never misread as to the eternal one once and again my soul implored me to teach her the heavenly learning 
I bade her learn the Aleph well by heart. Whoso knows that letter well need learn no more. I go hence and leave the world in strife, and I have barely strung one of a hundred pearls, and spoken remain many deep words, because my time would never have understood them. End of section seven. End of a third Rubiat Miscellany. Recording by Algie Pug.